grace and power of the Most High will prophesize the downfall of this wicked kingdom. So here we are in the year 2024, right? And I always keep thinking about this, how we're like nine months out from the election. Really, it's like eight because you know the leading up point to, you know, November, the election day. You know, people be going crazy, you know? So really, you could, you could round it down. You could say we're like eight months seven months away. We're not really voting to now. So, we see how this country is very, very divided. And, and, we, and we see the, traject the, the trajectory of this country, you know, the way it's headed, and it's not looking too good. So, um, you got a precept? I said this last week, I don't think that we're going to get out of here next year. I mean, this year. Probably not. I don't think we're going to be out of here this year. But it's wishful so thinking to hope that we're going to be out of here um, this year. This is Psalms 19 and 1. The point is at 4. I'm going to start at the top. It says, The heavens declare the glory of the Most High, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth his speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Yeah, because I, I mentioned earlier what year we're in, and um, we're in a modern day of technology, and one of the, one of the, the key things that helps get this truth pushed out to the four corners of the earth is the internet and so the most I created the internet and um, it's just been up ever, ever since you know knowledge has been increased you can simply go on Google and find out any any bit of information if you wanted to you could go on YouTube and get a full breakdown of whatever it is you want to know exactly you don't got to read books like you used to back in the day says there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard no speech no language where their voice is not heard you know you even also have um, brothers in GMS that are in like different countries and they, they, they're pushing the word you know, speak, speaking their native their native tongue right says their line is going out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world and them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun yeah a tabernacle for the, for the sun because in order in order for the destruction to come the elect has to be gathered you know the elect have to be sealed okay the word has to be spread throughout the four corners yeah so picture it like this we wouldn't even be this close to, to, to deliverance if we didn't have the, the full knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Let's say we go back to like 100 years ago. We was, no, we was nowhere near the end, really, compared to how we are now. 10 years ago, I didn't even know I was in Israel. Exactly. So this is, this is all prophetic. You know? So... Each brother and sister that comes into the, into the truth is like a block that, that's added to the house. It says the angels rejoicing. That was the point. I got a piece up. Matthew 24 and 14. Matthew 24 and 14. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Of the kingdom. And the kingdom is only for the Israelites. And anybody else that's, that's left over is for extra. Okay? You see, it's not going to be equal footing in the kingdom. 
it's going to be a hierarchy, an ethnic hierarchy, so you get an understanding. So put it like this, you're not going to see Edomites on the same level as Israelites. It's not going to be that way, especially when the Bible preaches and prophesizes that Esau is going to um, be done away with, like it says in, Ob in Obadiah chapter 1, verse 14. Says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come yeah and then shall the end come so christianity has been in existence for hundreds and hundreds of years and nothing has ever came came of it except lies and deception that's what they gave us when we was in the when we was in the, uh the fields picking cotton right when we was in hardcore slavery they gave us christianity and they gave us Jesus, sweet Jesus. That's, they made a stumbling block, right, as, right, right at our feet. That's exactly what it was, and it never benefited us. Calling on Jesus, Jesus Christ. As a whole, at one point, we for, we totally forgot that we was Israelites. Oh yeah, that's that great falling away. Yeah, uh, the great, that's the, a mag magic, yeah. And there should be a falling away first. I'm gonna continue while you get there. It says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken That's a second Thessalonians. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Yeah, so that's talking about 70 AD. Because uh, when the Romans sacked Jerusalem, we was never the same after that. That's when we became first in the interiors of, of, of Africa, mainly west, the west coast of Africa. And then you had the transatlantic slave trade, AKA the triangular slave trade, where, where, where Esau uh, brought the, the bulk of our people from and then uh, scattered them all throughout South, South America and, and in North America, you know? That's really where, where slavery started was uh, South America. You know, Jake likes to get on these, these Latin countries, you know, DR or like Columbia, but when you go into the history, they was the first slaves. Yeah. They had it bad. You, could, you can argue that they had side. it worse than um, Jake in America. Everybody on this side had it bad. Gad, Reuben. Yep. That's how you know where the people. And Gad was pretty much eradicated. For real. Remember you said you saw your first Gadite family recently? Yeah, whole family of them. I never even really seen one. I was, I was, that was the first time I ever seen Gad like in person in real life, and I, and I seen three of them at once. I was like, oh shit! So you don't, you don't see too many of them. They, they all on their reservations, all, all messed up. Okay. So there's, there's not many of them left, but the Lord did leave a remnant. So it'll be interesting to see how many of them are, uh, you know, of the elect. You know, because the, the scriptures do say that there's supposed to be twelve thousand that comes out of each tribe. And that's including um, the, the Northern Kingdom Israelites, you know, the so-called Native American Indians. Because if you don't know better, you could confuse Yad for Issachar. Yep. Like the way I was able to tell is because they had like the, the women, they had like the braids with the feathers in their hair. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. The Pocahontas braid. Continuing Matthew, or that was the point? There's more. This is Matthew 24 and 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Flee into the mountains. Because that's what we did. When, when, um, when, when Titus pulled up, when uh, the Romans pulled up with their army, they, they laid out um, pretty much garrisons around Jerusalem, like walls so that you couldn't get in and so that you couldn't get out. And then so the people that didn't listen or people that didn't listen, they wound up starving to death. They wound up dying. So that's why Yahweh Shai, he, he foretold about the event. He warned us so that, you could, so that we uh, would get ready and, um, and um, flee Jerusalem. It says, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, 
neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Because sadly, having a child in an event, in, a, in an event like that, is a burden. You really wouldn't even want to have a child now. Like now, let's, let's say we enter into the, the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's say you got like an eighth month old baby. That's going to be hard. That's going to be tough. I was watching one of the brothers' camps. They was like, in today's world, having a child today is a curse. And I was like, yeah, well, yeah, really. Even having a, a woman um, in a relationship is a curse. Because for one, your woman's not really loyal. She's not really with you. Let's be real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As soon as you fall off, or as soon as you, uh, so as soon as times get rough, you're gonna really see if she's in your corner or not. And most of the time, they're not. I always say this. It's like you see, you see like these dudes on YouTube with they like red the red pill people like and they talking points. It's like. Women, there was never a point in time where women as a whole were just righteous. It, just back then, in the ancient world, you had checks and balances. They wasn't able to run free and do what they want. Now they can do what they want. Remember that scripture where it says, out of a thousand women, uh, he couldn't. He found, he found not one to be righteous. He found not one to be righteous. So take that into consideration, man. Like, really think about that. The scriptures also say that there's a uh, little wickedness, but. Uh, the wickedness of a woman. But the wickedness of a, of a woman, roughly paraphrasing. Yeah. So, that just goes to show you the times we're in where having a child is a curse. That's supposed to be in the kingdom, that's going to be a joyous occasion. Yeah, and then God forbid you get a child, right? And then your wife puts you on child support. She don't want to be with you no more because she thinks she can do better than you. That's a yoke. That's another thing you got to worry about in this kingdom. So it's like, what, we, what do we really have for ourselves? We don't have our women. We don't got money. We don't got cars. <laughs> <laughs> you got a child. You have, you have, you, you have to get a, a DNA test. Like, that's, that's a prerequisite. Yeah, that's, that's automatic. Any of you Jakes out there that get children, that get children that, um, that are coming from a, an untrust, untrustworthy source, I, I advise you get a DNA test. All, all these sources are untrustworthy. Yeah, right. You got to do that for your own sanity. So let's get that scripture. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians two and three. I'll start at I'll start at the top. This is Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Yahawashai, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor yeah. by letter as from us as that day as that the day of Yahawashai is at hand yeah so we're not we're not troubled man we see all the things that's going on in life all the things that's going on in this world and we're just keeping our, our focus on the truth because that's all we have is the truth we mentioned earlier how it's pretty much impossible to, to, to raise a family in this kingdom the way that you will would want to because for one the woman she's she's in the trick bag of Esau you know she believes in feminism and then for two the cost of living is sky high so it's like a lot of these women that you see they're too broke to be by themselves but yeah at the same time that their pride is, is, is so strong that they don't want to be with a be with a man you know what I'm saying if, if it's not their vision, if it's not a their core. When in reality, if you're a man, the woman is supposed to be on your accord. Everything is supposed to go through you. You're supposed to be the one that controls everything. Scripture said that the man is the head, the head of the household, but you know, this world is upside down. So that's one of the things that has to change. They want to have their cake and eat it too. And you simps let them. This is the third verse. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, 
except there come a falling away first. Falling away first. Us losing the knowledge that we are the children of the Most High, the Israelites. Okay? It says, and that, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, who is that man of sin that's being revealed? It's Esau, the Edomites. They play a big role in, in, in the woes that we go through in our lives. You know that, what I'm saying? That's why when we expose them, they want to flag your channel and take your videos down. But they know what we're saying is true. If you was just saying a bunch of bullshit, who would care? Who would listen? And what's more is that in Revelation, it says that brothers is going to be beheaded for the witness of the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Matter of fact, get that. But uh, is there more in 2 Thessalonians? Or is that it? No. Okay. Because we're coming to a great time of, sh of shifting. We're going to see who's real and who's fake. This is Revelation chapter 20, verse... I'll start at three. And cast him into... Actually, you gotta start at the top. This is Revelation 20 and one. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So that's talking about the dark age and Byzantine Empire because when um, Western, when Western Rome fell, you see that Jay Will on the test? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I just, I remember, that, remember I showed you that video? Yo, that yo, video yo. that went viral? Yo. Jake Will around in the Tesla and he got to actually be enough burning with that. That's exactly what I thought of when I see it. Who the hell you driving a Tesla? Call it cheap. So more like a Honda. Yeah. The normal electric vehicles, they don't good. Especially when they catch on fire. <laughs> but um anyway, what was he saying? Talking about the uh Esau being chained for a thousand years, the Byzantine Empire. Yeah. Yeah, so dark age. When Western Rome fell, Eastern Rome took over. Which Eastern Rome was ruled by Jakes. And so that's, that's where uh, so-called blacks ruling Europe for over a thousand years came came in. I mean, they even got a, um, a TV series, a TV show on Netflix about that. I don't know if you ever heard about it. I forget the name of it, but yeah, I heard about it. They got the... Um, like, the Keith Stanfield in it? Yeah, it's crazy. Wait, something no, no, Clarence? No, no. That, that's, that's something different. That's, that's the book of Clarence. That's, that's the one that Jay-Z produced. So. But yeah, anyway... Um, Esau knows the truth that black, so-called blacks ruled Europe for a thousand years. And then so, once um, Esau rose into power, once Jake lost their power during the um, Byzantine Empire, you know, that's when Esau was able to excel. That's when you see um, the, Sp the Spanish Empire rise, um, the, British, the British took over. You know what I'm saying? France, Portugal. And these are nations that were responsible for, for taking a lot of Israelites' riches, taking over their lands, putting them in slavery. So he will be a he loose a little season. Yep. He's still in that season. Yep, so, so, so the time is now for Esau to be ruled. That's why we're still oppressed. That's why we're still on the bottom. That's why he doesn't like us bringing out this truth. Because he doesn't want to fool. Who would want to lose their power when they're in this position? You know what I'm saying? That's why when we get into the kingdom, it's gonna be it's gonna be sweet. Because we're not gonna lose our power. The scriptures speak about how it's gonna be an everlasting kingdom. And what and what's even better is that it's gonna be a righteous kingdom. You know what I'm saying? We're not gonna have to worry about the wickedness in this world going on in the kingdom. All, all types of adultery going on. You know what I'm saying? So, 
from Revelation 20 and 3. It says, And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahawashah. Uh, beheaded for the witness of Yahawashah. So, you heard about the guillotines, right? Yeah. How, how they was ordered, yeah. how they got them on standby. Mass order. Yep. So, let's see how that works out. See when and how they roll that up. It says, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received wait, wait, wait. his Spell it out. Don't say it. neither had received the MOTB upon his, their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Yahawashai a thousand years. Yeah, because the scriptures speak about those receiving the, the MARK, the Karagma how they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. So, those that resist, those that don't want to get down with the system, they're going to be deemed as a threat. See, uh, see Eli got that neural link popping. Oh yeah, I wanted to bring that out today. I wanted to speak about that. I mean, it's up in the air, you know, when it comes to the official release date of it. But you know, it's still good news to hear that they successfully did, did, did it on a, um, an actual person because before they was doing it on monkeys. Rats. Phase one. Yes. That's how, that's how it goes. Yeah, so that's a whole agenda right there. What do they call it? Transhumanism? Merging man with the technology. Okay. And they're going to come at it where it's like beneficial for, for, for people. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's part of the deception. That, I would imagine that that's how it would start. They'll give you like an option of choice, you know, or they'll give you like a, um, a time frame for when you have to get it, you know what I'm saying? Or else you gotta be shut out the system. Yeah. But you know, we'll wait and see how that plays out. Right now, I'm uh, reading into it that like, what you, what you can do with it now is like you can control like your smartphone and certain devices with it. Yeah, because smartphones aren't going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. So it's going to work with your smartphone. Like all things. You know how you got like the Apple Pay nowadays? Where you just simply, uh, you see people, they just simply put their phone to like the device to check out. You know what I'm saying? So that's like gradual. It's, it's, it's building up. Getting people's minds ready to win. Something that sounds so far fetched becomes a norm. Oh. Apple, they just rolled out their own. You know, what are those things? You know, like those goggles? Those, uh, it's not artificial intelligence. It, it's um, it's like those sci-fi shits. I forgot what they're called, but it's like how it's like... It's like you're living in a world with 3D. the goggles. It's like 3D. Nah, it's not 3D. What are those? Virtual reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those VR goggles. Which is like 3D. Yeah, sort of. That's like, that's like the next level 3D. Yeah. They go, um, they go, they're gonna put that chip in you, you're not, you're gonna be happy, you're not gonna have nothing, but they're gonna give you some goggles and just, you're gonna be living out your fantasy in them goggles. Yeah, remember that movie on Netflix with that Jake that, uh, played, that played Tupac in that Biggie movie? I forget his name, man. You know what I'm talking about. I know his name. Remember he, remember he's on that movie on Netflix where he was like, he had the goggles on. You see how you see how they program people? Yeah. They I'm do that. They do that a lot in Hollywood. I forget the name of that movie. I forget yeah. the name of the actor. Anthony Mackie's his name. Yeah, yeah, Anthony Mackie. He was in that that weird movie. They got another movie like that, uh, Ready Player One. That's sort of like that too. It's like they're living in a virtual reality with the goggles, but when they take the goggles off, they're in like complete despair, it's like living in a shack. Yeah. yeah. And this was like four years ago. You see like how now they got that technology out, you can actually go there and buy uh, those goggles, Facebook got them, what do they 
called like Oculus something? Oculus. The, meta, meta, the metaverse goggles. Yeah, metaverse, whatever they call it. That was in the Revelation. Corinthians chapter 13. I'll start at four. Actually, I'll start at five. It says, Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How know how that Yahweh shy is in you, except ye be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to the Most High. That ye do no evil. What does reprobate mean again? The way of judgment. Look it up. Uh, reprobate. Not standing the test. Not approved. That which does not prove itself such as it ought. Unfit for, unproved, spurious reprobate. So you got a lot of people. So not fit for the kingdom. Yeah, which means you, you're gonna get caught up in the destruction, of the judgment of uh, Yahweh about Shem Yahweh Shah. And then so yeah, you got a lot of people that are in the reprobate spirit. You know what I'm saying? It's sad, but that's the case. Two thirds more than one third. It says, but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to the Most High that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Yep. So this truth is going to stand the test of time, including the elect. This is Second Ezra, actually. Let's start with something. It's playing out here. This is Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And they shall take away certain of you, and feed you, being idle, with things offered unto idols. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision, and in reproach, and trodden under foot. For there shall be in every place, and in, and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. So, <laughs> I was actually watching Sakari's live last night. Um, they don't believe how Paul's, Paul's writings are authoritative. And then so one of the things that they mentioned in the video was how uh, you cannot eat uh, food offered to uh, uh, idols, sacrifice to idols. Read that again from the top. What did it just say? It says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And they shall take away certain of you, and feed you, being idle, with things offered unto idols. Yeah, so it's not like we have a choice. You know what I'm saying? What's that other scripture in Ezekiel where it says that we're going to have to eat the foul bread of the Gentiles? You know what I'm saying? So whether it's right or whether it's wrong, we're still living behind enemy lines. We're in America. The food, we all know that the food is bad here. We 
we can't do nothing about it. And not like we can just go and find some farmland land and grow our own food. You know how hard that is? You know how expensive land is? Right. Shoot, a lot of you jakes don't even know nothing about agriculture. And in certain places, you can't grow certain things. Like, in this weather right now, you can't grow nothing. Exactly. So what you gonna do? That's why you just pray over your food before you eat it. Exactly. What you gonna do, Star? He just don't want to cut his hair. <laughs> I'm like one of the brothers. I forgot his name. He just, he just, he just, he just don't want to cut his hair. So the second Ezra 16 to 70 says, "For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like mad men, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord." Because there's going to be great insurrection in the time of Jacob's trouble. However, however it plays out, you know what I'm saying? There could be there could be an event that takes place that causes it. it. Says for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Yep. And I mentioned earlier about how we're about eight months out, nine months out from the election. Just imagine if the results come in. Is not what the majority of people like. There could be a civil war that or chaos that breaks up, you know what I'm saying? Because the way this 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 place is right now, it's not looking too good. It's not doing good. So everything that, that's gonna happen this year is pivotal. They're gonna want to recount. Shoot, the world is on the brink of World War Three. And you know. China, they're getting ready to uh, invade Taiwan. That's, that's, that's in their mind. That's in their plans. They're getting their troops ready. They're looking at the logistics. In America, they're not going to be able to stop that. They're not right. going to be able to do anything about it. Yeah, I don't see China losing now. They're just saying that China's economy is not doing good. And they're saying part of the reason why is because of what happened in 2020. We all know what happened in 2020. So the 73rd verse says, Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Yeah, because when, when chaos breaks out, you're going to find out whether or not the Most High is with you. Things that we're going to have to like escape and just make it through, the Lord has to be with you because you're not going to be able to do it on your own. Not only that, but you're going to have to keep the faith no matter what. Right. You know what I'm saying? Temptation can come around, or uh, even death can come around. And you're still going to have to be faithful unto death. And if you're not, if you say you lose faith or you cop out and try to, you know, save yourself or whatever the case may be, then you're going to find out that you was never of the elect. You just fell off. You weren't the, you weren't the chosen. Exactly. You was deceived. What's that scripture where it says many have called in the name Lord, Lord, but they're not of my flock? Get that. You want me to get it? Yeah, 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 get it. John chapter 10 verse 16 says and other sheep I have which are not of this fold them also I must bring oh that's so that's talking about the scattered Israelites and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd yep because we're all going to come under the same the same king it's the same order and you can, let me also add that you're going to have Israelites that are Israelites but they don't look like look like Edomites or they might look like Hamites. You know what I'm saying? They look like any nation. They look like anything. Indians, East Indian. You know you got Jake's up there in Ethiopia, right? Yeah. But Jake's everywhere. So 
going to win. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name in thy name so that's, that's scary we got dudes that even know the name the names and they still not going to make it like for instance, that dude that uh, that, that had the, uh, the Christmas Hawashai Day, he called it Hawashai Day. Yeah. You think that guy's gonna make it? Like, let's be real. Unless he repents, that dude, that dude was he was eating pork on video. Going way over. Did you see the video? Yeah. yeah. He, was he was like, way over. yeah, you know you want something. <laughs> Lord, don't kill that nigga, man. The scriptures say in uh, Isaiah 66 that those that get caught eating the flying flesh, flesh, they're gonna be. Like what? What is the Lord supposed to do with that? Like, you think he's getting beamed up into a chariot? Highly doubt it. We'll see that guy repenting. <laughs> and, he, and he's overweight. We shouldn't even be eating like that in the first place. If you want to be, if you want to be um healthy, how you say you're an Israelite and eat pork? That don't make any sense. You might as well just be a Christian. That's, that's, that's strong. You're basically a Christian calling on the names, basically. Right. That's yeah, strong. You know the names, Yahweh and Yahweh, Shai, that's it. You know you're an Israelite. So many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Get away from me, nigga. I don't know you. Chapter 1, at, yeah, Proverbs 1, I'll start at 22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Turn you at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, I will make known my word unto you. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set and not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Yeah, so yeah, you might be in the end days, you might be calling on a name, but again, if you're not of the chosen, you're not gonna get beamed up. The Lord and the angels are just going to be mocking you, laughing at you. 
like that dude talking about your Howard side day, eating pork. Says, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would not. They would none of yeah. my counsel. They despise all my reproof. So if you're really out here eating pork, you don't fear the Lord. And it says that they shall seek, seek me early, but they shall not find me. Early meaning that earlier on, before we was in the knowledge, before we was in the, the truth, we was we was looking at ourselves as if we was Christians. We was, we was dealing with Christianity. You know what I'm saying? We was all that before we came into the truth. And they even deal with the same book as us. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you got a lot of Jakes that, that deal with the Bible and that claim Christianity, but they'll never enter into the, to the, to the full knowledge, to the, the true understanding. What is it saying on Romans? They have the zeal for knowledge. Nice. Get that one real quick. And then after that, I got a precept. Have a zeal. So like I said, there's gonna be a lot of our people that never cross over. You got You're it. Good. good. This is Romans 10 and 12. I mean 10 and 2, Salakia. So For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the most high, but not according to knowledge. Deal with the Most High, but not according to knowledge. They think that they're worshiping the Most High sincerely and in, and in truth, but in reality that they're not. Now give uh, Proverbs 29 and 1. This is Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Yeah, so it's no question, it's no wonder when somebody gets judged, when somebody gets destroyed, when they're often uh, being reproved, being rebuked. You know what I'm saying? Right. The scriptures speak about how we're supposed to show our people their transgressions and that's what we've done ever since this truth is really like spread and going viral you know you see all these camps that have uh, a lot of hits on their videos and then um, it's always something controversial right yeah and it's always about some Jake that's getting rebuked or some Jake that's you know cursing somebody out or, you know, or going off you know what I'm saying or has those salacious ass titles yep where you saw kissing their boot or something yeah 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 so when judgment day comes they can't say that they didn't get a chance to, to, to hear the truth to hear the word um, when the righteous are in authority continue or that was the point that's it this is Exodus chapter 32 verse 9 and the Lord said unto Moses I have seen this people and behold it is a stiff necked people now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them. So this is talking about the uh, 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. You know, we're the most hard-headed people on this earth, really. You know, a lot of our people, they suffer from, um, what is it called? <laughs> See, see that's, see, see, that's exactly what we're talking about. But, um, yeah. What is it called? Um, a lot of our people, they suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. Right. You know what that means. You know, they, they still want to um, love their oppressors. 
we tell them, we giving them the truth, we're telling them the real name of our Savior, but yet they want to keep calling on Jesus. They think they still think Jesus is the way. They think that because the so-called white man gave us Black History Month, it's all good. So now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. Romans, yeah, Romans 10 and 21. But to Israel, he saith all day long, I have stretched forth my hand unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Disobedient and gainsaying people. That's us. That was, that was the point. That, that's Jake for you in a nutshell. Disobedient, gainsaying, stiff, hard-hearted, stiff-necked, sodish. You know that this, these are all the words that was described that describe our people. Like, they just can't get right. They can't get out their own way. But again, you got those allotted for judgment. Yeah. I love my people, but they hold us back. Yeah. I love my people, but they hold me back. And so. The only reclamation, I always say this, the only reclamation for us as a people is that some of some of our people, they just have to be put to the destruction. That's it. Right. Because we ain't going to get everybody on the same page. They're not going to acknowledge and accept that they're Israelites. Or, or, or have the real faith, you know what I'm saying? The only time that's going to happen is when we're under the, under the new covenant, which we're not anything in between the old and the new covenant you know but you know part of being in the new covenant is our bodies being perfected our minds being perfected we're not going to sin anymore the laws of the most high are going to be programmed into our minds from birth all right when we have children we're not going to worry about our children growing up and just being a bunch of evil 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 niggas degenerates degenerates you know going on you know how there's kids like that yeah. and don't listen to their parents or their single parent, you know what I'm saying? And they, they just end up going through a system, you know, going in and out of jail, stuff like that. Yeah. It'd be a complete righteousness in the kingdom. Yeah, you could do a statistic, uh, statistic study of the amount of people that are in jail and that grew up in single parent households, and I bet you it'll be over. Yeah. It'll be over. Uh, the vast majority that you know they didn't grow up with a father in the household, you know. Okay, yeah, because the father is a disciplinarian, so you have no fear. I mean, at a certain age, it's like, what can your mother really do with you? Like, I remember when I, there was times when I got a certain age, like my mom would try to spank me. It's like I would just let her do it, and it really didn't even hurt because it's like you really can't do nothing. That's right. why you need a man in the house. Then you can have both parents, and even still, if they're not teaching that you that you're an Israelite, you know, if they're not teaching that, that you're a royal people and that you should do right by your brothers and sisters, you know, you're still gonna um, go off and veer off, and veer off the path, right? right? There's many ways you can go in this kingdom, many choices, right? Well, the arrow is the gate, the road is the way. Proverbs 14 and 12. 14 and 12? Yep. This is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way 
which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Exactly. So, like I said, there's many paths that you can take in this kingdom. So choose wisely, or rather, you better hope the most high puts the spirit on you to choose wisely, because it, it, is, it is not you that is in control of your destiny and in your faith. It's not you. You know, it's the angels that put the spirit on you, that puts the thoughts in your mind to do what you do. So our hope is that the, uh, the most high and the angels, you know, watch over us and protect us from all sorts of evil and wickedness. And also, the, and also from the destruction. Keep going. Let's go up to the 16th verse. No, keep going until you reach the 16th verse. There is Proverbs 14 and 12 again. It says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. That backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways and a good man shall be satisfied from himself the simple believeth every word but the prudent man looketh well to his going the simple believeth every word but the prudent man looks well to his going so being prudent means that you have foresight you're thinking about the future not just thinking about the now and so we're, I'll put it like this. I'll put it, I'll phrase it like this. We're investing our stock right now. You know what I'm saying? So that when the time comes, we're going to be well off. You know, our hope is that we get delivered from, from the missiles from uh, World War III. And, um, you know, we're part of the first groups in the kingdom. That's our hope. Let me read that again. It says the sip. Uh, Proverbs 14 and 15 The simple believeth every word But the prudent man looketh well to his going So you know you got a lot of simple jakes Simple minded jakes out there That are just, that are just gullible right. They don't study They don't do research They think that they got the truth in Christianity Or they think that they got the truth And um, you know the new thing now is the Native American Indian You know They saying that jakes that was here in America They're the real Indians they really, they really think that. They really believe that. I seen this sister. I don't know what GMS camp it was, but she pulled up in the camp and she said that, "Oh, America is Israel." That's another new thing. Now. They saying that America is Israel. You heard that one? Uh, I hear that. You hear that one? So I think I know you. I think I know the video you're talking about. I think it was the, uh, the Florida camp or something. I think it was in Orlando. Yeah, Orlando. Yeah. GMS Orlando. So then she rolled up. She said, "Yeah, America is on uh, Israel. How, how could you really believe that? You got nothing to prove it. Just talking. Yeah, you just heard that somebody say that. And you, and you really believe it, right? Same thing in Christianity. Pastor up there, you just believe in every word he says because he's in a so-called place of authority. Oh yeah, because yeah. he's in a because he, because he's in a place of authority." So you're hanging on to every word he's telling you, but you're not you're not being prudent. Shalom. 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 Where's that? Oh. Yeah, Christian Church, you hanging on to every word that pastor is telling you. But you're not being prudent. You're not looking to go see if it's true for yourself. So you, you just believe in anything he says, and that's going to lead you into destruction. It's going to get you a missile. Yep. It says, uh, that was the point. You got to reach up and take us out right.
is John chapter 2. I'm going to start at 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be mad, but that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth. Yeah, so but, going back to the time of the apostles and those great men, um, you had a, you had people that uh, that that really veered off the path. You know, like the scriptures tell you about, you know, that that fell off. You know, one for example is uh, Judah, because he he betrayed Yahweh, right? But the reason why he did that was because he was fulfilling prophecy. The Most High put the Spirit on him to do that. Yeah. Even Judas, he's gonna be in the kingdom in his right mind, yeah. the right spirit. Judas. The, this is the point. It says, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know, know it that no lie is of the truth. Yeah, there's no lie that is of the truth. So, in all reality, there's only one truth, and we have it. Right. That's all that we need, man. That's all that we need to help us navigate in this wicked world that we live in. Pastor can't break down prophecy to you. Exactly. And that's a major thing. And it gives you it gives you hope and it helps build your faith when you know about prophecy. And it's it's even better when you see it happening right before your eyes. Yep. We're living in the last days right now. Yep. You see the signs, it's all there. All the, see the stars signs. are aligning, so to speak. And so it just lets you know that we're, we're, we're close to the end. So close that I can taste it. So with that, we're going to end. Shalom. Shalom.